So I don't think I personally have talked about this game a lot on this channel, but I have done a few podcast episodes with the guys on our podcast channel, Three Amigos Podcast. And I think as of recently with these news that we got uh, today, I believe came out, it's time I do talk a bit about it on my channel. Um, Gotham Knights, if you haven't heard by now, is being locked at 30 frames per second. Now, to someone like me, it doesn't really bother me because I may be able to notice a difference between 30 and 60, but it only is an issue for me if I was going to buy the game day one, which I'm not. And I've had said this before. I don't know if, it, like I said, I don't know if I said it enough here or if it was all just on the uh, podcast channel. But I've said from the beginning, this game was not going to be any good in my opinion. And I did also say that I believe this game is going to rank at about a 6 out of 10, give or take. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that why. Okay, nothing, nothing about, you know, Batman not being in the game is not what it is. It was some of the mechanics they put in this game that I didn't think was all that great. I don't really like a gear system that's similar to like Assassin's Creed and other RPGs. And they're trying to make this to an RPG, but... I think the way they're going about it might be kind of dumb. And then you have the idea that you can do two-player co-op, but not four-player co-op, despite having four characters to choose from. And they claim to have rumors of dropping a four-player mode, but it's for like an arena battle, so not an open-world four-player. I do kind of like the idea that your co-op will not be tethered in the sense that you don't have to worry about doing one thing and then your partner interrupts you. You know, you can do two, you know, totally different things. And I do like the idea of if you do some missions with a co-op partner in their game, as you know, they're hosting and you're the joining party, and then you reach that point in your game, you have the option to replay it or skip it if you want. That is really cool. I, I, I actually like that idea. But there's a lot of other things about this game that I think is making it going to fail at launch or not do as great as people think it might. I don't know many people out there who are dying to get this game day one, but you're paying $70 for a next-gen console game, current-gen, next-gen, whatever you want to call it, at 30 frames per second. Whereas on PC, which I don't like PC gaming, I've said that before, I have my reasons for PC gaming that I don't like, but the PC version, which will probably run better, is $10 cheaper anyway. And... I've been saying to people, don't worry about this game not being on PS4 and Xbox One. You're not going to be missing out on much anyway, in my opinion. Um, they made this um, kind of uh, point in some like press release or whatever, recent videos and discussions, that this is a living Gotham City with pedestrians and everything. I've seen quite a few YouTubers who had their hands on the game early. There's not that many pedestrians in the streets. And yes, I get it, Gotham and it's nighttime. But it still don't feel like a living, breathing city from what I saw, okay? And I'm not trying to compare it to Spider-Man that is a living, breathing city of Manhattan because it is a living, breathing city, whether it's day or night. And I think the bit of pedestrians in the game was just to make some fans happy. Like, oh, it's no longer just criminals, it's actually pedestrians, fine. But the point here is that the game is next-gen only, and it's $70, and it's 30 frames per second, Lack of um, detail in the in uh, the pedestrians. I've seen a lack of detail in environments. I've seen environments where players are playing the game and fighting, and it feels empty and not filled in with detail. Combat is supposed to be different from the Arkham games, so you know, somewhat different. But taking away the counter for a dodge, and I heard people say the combat doesn't feel that great, and some people think it feels okay. Um, the whole co-op thing where you can play as two Red Hoods or two Nightwings, that's really stupid in my opinion. I understand, oh, I want to build Red Hood or Nightwing, so I'm going to do that even though my partner is also doing the same thing. That's why I kind of hate that whole gear system. You can choose what kind of build you want for your character. That would make sense if it was like, you can play as Batman and you can decide, does your Batman want to be pure combat? Does your Batman want to focus more on gadgets? This is... Four playable characters, one focused on firearms, which is Red Hood, um, Batgirl and Robin. I think one of them was more techie than the other. I think Robin had more techie tech stuff and Batgirl was more Batarangs and stuff things, I guess. And then Nightwing, whatever the fuck Nightwing does, you know. So it kind of doesn't make sense of 
you can make one character very similar to another one when you can just play as other character. You know what I mean? It should be if you want to focus uh, solely on, um, you know, acrobatics and combat, you're gonna use Nightwing. If you want to focus on using gadgets in field, you use Robin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You want to focus on just shooting everybody from a distance, use Red Hood, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. That doesn't make sense to me at all. I don't really understand that aspect. I don't really respect that aspect. But I think that the whole idea that this game is next gen only and it's 30 frames per second, and they waited till now to tell us this, that means that uh, they're keeping other things a secret, possibly. And this game is probably set up to fail from the beginning. So I don't know why people are not going to wait until Black Friday because that's one month away. And it's probably going to be on sale for like 30 bucks or so. Uh, that's what I'm going to wait for if I do decide to pick up the game after some patches and updates, you know. Um, similar to Assassin's Creed games, not many people buy Assassin's Creed games at launch because they wait for those bugs to be fixed up. They wait for those updates to come out and they buy it on Black Friday because it's always on sale on Black Friday. Um, I'm not trying to say it's going to be the same situation, but I just don't think this is going to be worth the full price tag at launch. And I think you need to be aware of this and do more research before you buy a game. I have certain people in my life that I tell them this all the time and then they buy a bullshit game and they get upset with the money they spent. And I tell them, it's all over the place. Go to YouTube, you can find everything you need to find about that product before you buy it. You can find all the reviews, all the different opinions. If you see more positive than negative, then maybe it's a better uh, purchase. If you see more negatives than positives, there you go. You probably shouldn't spend the money. Why waste the money on a gamble trying to find out if something is good or worth it when you can watch a lot of other people talk about it who has spent the money or who had the chance to play it without spending money to tell you, hey, I don't recommend you buy this game. Cool, you just saved $70, $70, which could be used for, if you have a PlayStation, God of War. If you have an Xbox, um, I don't know what else is coming out within the next few months or so for Xbox, but you, know, but you can save money for something else, you know, buy some clothes or a pair of shoes or something, you know. So i don't recommend you buy this game at launch i recommend you wait for a sale and wait for updates and more reviews because we do have some reviews some previews some hands-on but we don't have many straight up reviews of the game which you know that'll be happening a couple days before the game launches anyway you know ign's review will be re review will be out before the game releases and i've seen examples in the past where a lot of games that have all these previews and all these hands-on before release it's typically a bad sign. Um, Cyberpunk had something similar, and Cyberpunk had a disaster of a launch. Um, the, the last Saints Row game, a lot of previews and hands-on stuff, and it was a disaster of a launch. It was a terrible game. This is falling into that same coincidence of the game has a lot of pre pre hands-on previews. Um, they're giving the game to um, you know YouTubers to test it out and share their opinions. And similar to Cyberpunk, where Cyberpunk said you can only show gameplay that we give you, whereas for Gotham Knights, they're saying you can only show gameplay of these specific sections. Not so much the same thing, but similar in the sense that this game's gonna fail at launch. And I'm telling you now, it's not gonna get a 10 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, maybe 6 out of 10, maybe 5 out of 10, maybe 7. If it gets a 7, that'd be surprising, but um, I don't think you should waste your money on this game as of yet. Give it some time for it to release and get reviews and go on sale. Okay, but 30 frames per second for next gen. Come on, guys. I'm Matthew Olan, and I'll catch you guys later.